Earth, the planet we call our home. From deserts to snowy mountains, as surely as the seasons change, through the passage of time, every inch of our world is, as it has always been, teeming with life, with creatures large and small. Join us in celebrating the mighty wilderness in Wild About. Deep in primordial forests, in the dark jungles, or in the freezing arctic cold, in the heart of darkness, where the elements take over, where nature dwarfs man, if you hear a rumble, the crackling of ice, or the breaking of twigs, followed by an echoing roar, like a chill down your spine, you'll know it's there. A lumbering giant, a fearsome hunter, a mythic beast. Giants of the wild. Bears are the largest predators on land. The largest Kodiak bear recorded having nearly three times the mass of the largest tiger, at over 2,400 pounds, measuring over 10 feet in height when standing upright. While the smallest, the sun bear, is just shy of five feet tall, weighing as little as 44 pounds. Though most are in fact omnivorous, with the brown bear notably being the most omnivorous creature on land next to humans found to be able to eat a wider variety of foods than any other wild animal, making them equally highly opportunistic, eating anything from leaves and berries, fish, deer, and livestock, to human waste and carrion, while the polar bear is the only exclusively predatory bear, with the panda being mostly herbivorous. Bears can be found throughout Europe, Asia, and the Americas often in forests, but also in mountainous regions, grasslands, and tundra, as well as in the Arctic. They are caniforms, members of the family Ursidae. Though despite sharing habitats with many other caniforms, such as wolves, foxes, and wild dogs, bears are more closely related to seals than any other dog-like animal. They evolved from primitive raccoon-like ancestors over 30 million years ago, diversifying into a wide range of prehistoric bears, flourishing around the same time as the first humanoids started to emerge five million years ago, many of which reaching giant sizes to correspond with the existing megafauna of mammoths and saber-toothed tigers. Prehistoric giant short-faced bear, notably reaching heights over 15 feet, surviving as late as 11,000 years ago. Bears today are divided into eight species. The sloth bear, found only in India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. Unusual for bears, they are mainly nocturnal and are distinguished by their long, shaggy coat, forming a distinctive mane, and their highly specialized lower lip and palate, lacking several front teeth, used to suck out insects such as termites out of burrows and nests. The spectacled bear, also known as the Andean bear, is the only bear found natively in South America. It is considered the largest terrestrial carnivore in South America, though notably only 5% of its diet consists of meat, the rest being fruits, leaves, and nuts. It is distinguished by large beige or ginger-colored markings across its face and chest, often around the eyes, giving it its name. The giant panda, notably unrelated to the red panda of the weasel family. The giant panda feeds almost exclusively on bamboo stalks. They can today only be found in a few mountain ranges in central China. Easily recognized by its highly distinctive black and white coloration pattern. The sun bear, also known as the honey bear, found in rainforests throughout Southeast Asia. Distinguished by their comparatively small size, thin collar patch of white or yellow fur, light colored face and its exceptionally long tongue used for extracting honey and termites. The remaining four species of bears are closely related, all found in the family of Ursus. These include the mighty polar bear, found only north of the Arctic Circle, 
Known for their immense size and white color, they spend most of their time in the water, hunting their preferred prey of seals. Also included is the Asian black bear, also known as moon bear, distinguished by a large white patch on its chest. Powerful front legs, specifically adapted for climbing trees, and highly aggressive behavior, despite being largely a herbivore. It is found in Central and Southeast Asia, the American black bear, found in great numbers throughout North America. Known for being highly intelligent and peaceful, generally avoiding any human contact. Lastly, the brown bear, the most widely distributed of all bears worldwide, spread out over North America, Russia, China, Europe, and Asia Minor. It is the most famous and iconic of all bears, known under a variety of names for each of its many subspecies, distinguished by their large size, a distinctive shoulder hump and sloping concave back, and their fur ranging from a reddish brown to a brown gray, as well as their unusually long claws, adapted for digging and mauling as opposed to climbing. Bears today come in a wide range of shapes and sizes. All are highly robust with large rounded frames, with a massive solid torso, powerful muscular shoulders and neck, a short vestigial tail, and comparatively short stocky legs, walking on their hands and feet as opposed to their fingers and toes, unlike most other caniform, distributing their weight toward their hind limbs, leading to their lumbering gait. Though bears are commonly quadrupeds, they are also highly capable of bipedal standing and sitting to reach higher objects, to get a better vantage point, or to appear larger when threatened, either by another animal, another bear, or humans. Despite their build, bears are also highly efficient runners and swimmers. Brown bears easily able to reach speeds of up to 30 miles an hour on land, though they are still slower than most canines and felines. The species name of the polar bear itself, Maritimus, stemming from its semi-aquatic nature, as they are great swimmers. Several species of bear are also at least partially arboreal, climbing after prey or feeding off of the tree itself, even taking shelter on the treetops and branches overnight. Only the largest species, the polar bear and the brown bear, not able to climb trees. All bears are covered in a warm layered coat consisting of two primary layers. The dense undercoat, made up of many short hairs close to the skin, and longer outer guard hairs to trap air and keep dirt and water out of the inner layer. The fur is either brown or black, with only the panda and polar bear being significantly white. The polar bear having unique guard hairs made out of hollow translucent bristles, trapping the air inside for insulation against the freezing waters of the Arctic while their dense white underfur is what gives them their color, yellowing with age. The primary sensory input of bears comes from their superior sense of smell. Though the olfactory lobe of a bear's brain is comparatively average, their elongated snout contains a highly developed nasal cavity, with the total area of their nasal mucous membrane inside being over 100 times the size of a human's, giving bears up to seven times the sense of smell of a bloodhound enabling the bear to sense prey or danger from up to 50 miles downwind, even able to detect another animal's passing up to 15 hours after the fact. Augmented by what is known as a vomeronasal organ, a cavity inside the palate of the bear filled with highly sensitive sensory neurons, detecting airborne chemicals and pheromones. The eyesight of bears is typically acute and believed to have near full color vision on par with that of humans for most species, to aid in foraging for colored berries and fruits. The polar bear having evolved additional low light eyesight to be able to see its prey underwater. Though bears are commonly nearsighted, shown to have difficulty distinguishing shapes at a distance. While their hearing is highly developed, all bears typically have very large curved non-retractable claws on each of their paws, which coupled with their immense strength enables the bears to easily grab and tear at any prey, no matter the size, and large powerful jaws, easily capable of crushing flesh and bone. 
as well as chewing tough vegetable matter, bark, and roots. With large pointed canines, which it uses to crack open trees to access honey and insects inside, and flat molars, reflecting their omnivorous nature, contrary to common perception. Bears are generally active mainly during the day, roaming large territories or migrating between nearby areas, often centered around a fixed den, usually a cave or burrow, providing shelter from harsh weather, rivals, and opportunistic predators. Though they are seldom strongly territorial, bears can be found protective of their home ranges when threatened or when raising cubs. Highly solitary, bears are only rarely found in pairs or smaller groups around mating season or when raising their young, as well as in rare cases of seasonal bounties, such as during salmon runs, only rarely coming into conflict with other bears. Though bears rarely ever back down from a confrontation, preferring to stay their ground, whether with a rival or another predator. In colder climates, bears often go into a state commonly called hibernation over the winter months, during which the bear lowers his bodily functions and sometimes also body temperature, not to expend any unnecessary energy, with its heart rate dropping in some species significantly requiring no food or water, nor do they need to urinate or defecate, building up fat reserves during the summer and autumn months in order to survive. Though this is not considered true hibernation compared to other hibernating animals, as bears can easily be awoken, giving rise to the familiar expression to wake a sleeping bear, an ability thought to have evolved out of the necessity of the female bear to care for and protect her young as hibernating bears commonly give birth during this time. Bears rely mainly on body language, an array of specific vocalizations for communication, as well as territorial markings. In particular, known for scratching or tearing at trees to leave marks to be found by other bears. Vocalizations include moanings for mild warnings, barking to raise alarm or stemming from excitement, huffing during courtship or between mother and cubs, growling as a stronger warning, roaring for outright intimidation and humming, employed by cubs as a means of signaling the mother of their position. All bears exhibit significant sexual dimorphism, with males of all species often considerably larger than females. The age in which the bear becomes sexually mature varies greatly between species and subspecies alike. From sun bear females maturing as young as two years of age, to brown bears, where males may not mature even until nine years, only then becoming large enough to rival older males. Mating season typically occurs once a year, for a short period of time as the female goes into estrus, for between a few days for pandas to several months for American black bears, emitting powerful pheromones detected by nearby males. Bears are generally polygamous as well as polyandrous, many males mating with many females, only the brown bear being serially monogamous, staying with a single mate for an extended period of time to ensure the success of conception. The courtship of most bears is often brief and simple, consisting of initial cautious greetings, the male first approaching the female, signaling his intent by loud huffing, at which point the female reciprocates, inviting the male for mating. The mating act itself is brief, lasting between 30 seconds to five minutes, but repeated often until conception occurs. With most bears, this occurs in spring or summertime, when food is still abundant, fertilized egg not taking hold for the first few months, 
allowing the bear time to gain weight in anticipation of the pregnancy, thanks to a process of delayed implantation, wherein the fertilized egg floats freely inside the female's uterus, only attaching to the uterine wall and developing further in winter. In hibernating species, if the female hasn't gained enough weight prior to dormancy, the egg never attaches and is instead reabsorbed into the female's body, foregoing the added risk of a pregnancy while she is malnourished. Bear pregnancies can last between two to five months for pandas, brown bears, polar bears, and sun bears. Up to seven or even eight months for sloth bears, Asian and American black bears, and spectacled bears whose cubs typically develop faster. Most litters consist of one to six cubs, older females typically giving birth to large litters, and first-time mothers only having single births. Bear cubs are born blind, toothless, and with a minimal amount of fur. They weigh less than two pounds, even for the largest bears. The panda cubs being the proportionally smallest infants of any placental mammal, weighing only three to four ounces. Breastfeeding until strong enough to follow the female in search of food. A period that can range from six months to up to two years depending on the species. The cubs then remain in the care of their mother for an additional two years after weaning, during which the reproductive cycle of the female is suppressed only resuming after the cubs leave her care. The mother teaches its cubs how to forage for food, what foods are high in nutritional value, how to hunt, and how to fish, as well as how to defend themselves and where to den. The cubs learn by following and imitating their mother, as well as by playing among themselves. The mother bear is typically highly protective of their young and can appear highly aggressive to any perceived threat. With threats including not only other large predators such as tigers and wolves, but also other bears. The brown bear notably practicing infanticide, either by males to force the female into another reproductive cycle to bear its own cubs, or for cannibalism. Bear lifespans typically range around 20 to 25 years, only in rare cases in the wild and in captivity exceeding 35 to 40 years, due to their immense size and role in the food chain. The mortality rate of adult bears is typically comparatively low at around 10%, most only succumbing to disease, accidents, or conflicts with other bears with the tiger of Asia being the only predator known to regularly attack and prey upon adult bears. Bears have long been a significant symbol in human history. Many cave paintings of prehistoric man portraying conflicts with bears, both worshipped as animal deities as well as feared as an omen or sign of oncoming death. The very word bear originating from an early Germanic word for brown, initially a euphemism used out of superstition. Ancient peasants fearing that uttering their local word for bear would summon it, simultaneously symbols of both danger and power. Their solitary and reclusive nature and reluctance to approach humans also initially shrouded them in mystery, spawning many misconceptions of their nature. Bears are now believed to have given rise to several myths of giant woodland or mountainous creatures, including Bigfoot and the abominable snowman, the Yeti, stalking the wilderness of North America and the Himalayas respectively. Bears have also since been a staple of folklore and fables across the globe, often featuring in fairy tales and epic poems as magical or peaceful creatures of the woods extending to Christian legends of bear taming by saints in the Alps as a recurring motif used by the church to symbolize the victory of the Christian faith over paganism. Today, bears are often used as a national symbol for countries around the world, from the gentle Chinese panda to the imposing giant of the Russian bear. Bears have seeped into the public consciousness, frequently depicted as not only mighty predators, but also as often less intelligent, gentle giants 
in children's shows and cartoons, as well as being closely associated with stuffed toys since the early 20th century, through the teddy bear, named as such following an incident of then U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt hunting an American black bear, later mocked for refusing to kill it after capture, deeming it unsportsmanlike, prompting toy manufacturer Morris Mitchum to make a toy based on a bear cub, dubbing it Teddy's Bear, soon becoming immensely popular as a traded gift between children and adults alike, with sales of teddy bears today exceeding a billion U.S. dollars per year. Though bears once existed across the globe, they are now relegated only to a handful of areas scattered over a few dozen countries. All but the American black bear and the brown bear are today listed as vulnerable or endangered, with many subspecies of brown bears risking extirpation, some such as the Marsican brown bear existing only in the dozens, in part due to deforestation with encroaching human settlements everywhere, as well as a worldwide spread of agriculture destroying their natural habitats. But mostly due to hunting, the added danger of bear hunting often seen as the main attraction of it, leading to many bears turning nocturnal specifically to avoid hunters, forced to rely more on vegetation and nocturnal animals than their usual prey, eventually giving rise to far-reaching disruptions in the ecosystem Hunted bears are often repeatedly wounded to slowly bleed to death, as hunters often struggle to kill a bear instantly. Also, using massive bear traps, maiming and mutilating the bear, though often not enough to kill it outright, instead incapacitating the bear until the hunter returns for the trap, or until starvation. The severed heads and coats of bears are then often turned into trophies, hung on walls for display, the Inuit of Canada and Greenland significantly relying on polar bear meat for sustenance. While in China, bears are often hunted in large numbers or even farmed for their gallbladders, containing ursodeoxycholic acid, or UDCA, believed to aid in treating rheumatism, poor eyesight, and gallstones. Despite the widespread prevalence of newer and cheaper artificially produced options, though often seen as dangerous. Brown bears, polar bears, American black bears, sloth bears, having injured and even killed many throughout history, most avoid all contact with humans, being shy and easily frightened. They are nevertheless often demonized when incidents do occur, with several notable cases of lynch mobs gathering to drive out and kill bears who have attacked humans. As a result, conservation groups often struggle to raise awareness and sympathy for the bears in areas where they are most threatened. It seems bears worldwide are now facing an uncertain future, with little room left for the once mighty animals. But until then, they remain in our forests and mountains, in our grasslands and tundras in the cold harshness of the Arctic and tropical jungles. As among the last remaining giants of the wild,